Rebel, 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 version 6 just released. I've never heard of this or ever used it before, so I have no idea if it's any good. So let's try it out. I'm giving myself an hour to do something with it, and then I will come back with my thoughts and recommendations. Here we go, and let's paint a thing. Let me see if I can change the canvas color. I can. In the demo version, watermark is always there, so that's fun. That's fun. You can tell I'm a professional. Professional. It's kind of annoying. I kind of wish that this demo had a clean canvas. And then if you wanted to save the output, it would just give you a, um, a watermark that way. I'm using the oil acrylic brush uh, size sliders here. You can see a little bit of the paint buildup. Express oils? What does that mean? Ooh. Express oils. I have no idea what any of this means. Oh, it's like um, if you use a lighter touch with it, it has a lighter color. But if you push down, you get more of the paint on the canvas. I should have started with this. I like these oils. I think um, I think I'll stick with the oils because I like the texture that it gives. But I'm sure these are pretty good too. Normally when I break open an art program, I try to find one or two tools that I use and I stick with them until I get to a point where I'm stuck. And if I ever get stuck, then I try to find something else. It looks like the paint blends with the layer below it, so you don't have to collapse it to be on, on one layer. That's pretty interesting. Flat round? Let's try flat round. Ooh, oh, okay, yep. Flat round gives us some interesting things going on. The keyboard shortcuts for brush size work as you would expect them to, so that's pretty cool. I do like the fluidity of this stuff, though. Um, pastels, do we have a blender? Smudge? Let's try the smudge. Let's try spiky smudge. That's cool. Nope. Well, that looks like ass. <laughs> With the glazing brush, you can see this. If I can zoom in here. There we go. You can see this um, underlying paint texture underneath, like the, the base layer. So it kind of glazes over. Painting a creature as a demo is great because you can just make up the anatomy <laughs> as you're going along. <laughs> can really push stuff around here. This is cool. I, I kind of like the feel of the program. I like the the quality. Um, so far, I feel like you could have a lot of fun painting very loose with this stuff. I'm also trying not to zoom in too much. I tend to zoom in quite a bit when I'm inking and that that doesn't always like sometimes you spend a lot of time on details that you're that that aren't going to print. Another thing I don't know is if this program because of all the simulation stuff it does with all the textures and the brush if it chugs on your computer. I've a I've a fairly fast robust machine and I don't know if this painting experience would be similar if I was on a laptop. So um maybe that would have been a good demo instead of you know working on the big machine but my laptop is way out of date so i don't think that would be a fair test so i'm using a huion huion tablet and the huions do not have the tilting built in like wacom tablets do but this is giving me something i'm lying it's not giving me shit <laughs> So I'll use a a very desaturated tannish color. When it, and when it's placed next to darker tones, it kind of looks like white, but it's not. I don't know if this pink is doing it. I think it. Yeah, I think it's bad. It's bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> like I feel like if I had the tilty brush, that I could have a little bit better edge control and like blend things a little bit better. 
Some little specular dots. Specular dots never hurt anybody. That's what you get when you don't really plan and you just kind of go with the flow. So it looks like there is a smudge tool if you go, oh, it's a blending tool. All right, so let's use this blender. Let's use the textured blender and see what we get. Oh, something happening. It's a little messy. It goes a little outside the lines. Sometimes it's fun to get out of your regular Clip Studio Photoshop, Photoshop, Clip Studio, Clip Studio, Photoshop, Photoshop, Clip Studio. And it's nice to see what else other people are doing. This this feels like a, a very painterly focused program that I think would be a lot of fun to mess with and and figure out. I do think the the tilt function, I have to do some reading into what this thing does because it doesn't seem to do anything. We have a grumpus here, some a grumpy personality emerging. Marr. I enjoy this process so far. There's some things I would want to do more research into, like the, the pen tilt. Um, the brush tilt, I think, is is crucial to figure out because I think one of the things with painting that when you're using these broad strokes is if you can really define those edges. And part of that comes from angled brush strokes, brush strokes during the center way. Actually, you know what? I could just tilt the canvas and then do it that way. There we go. Like the watermark, you are so unhelpful. Oh, I haven't erased anything. Uh, oh, I don't like that. Okay, undo. Why don't you want me to clean up my mess? The rotate function is really funny. <laughs> I can't figure out how to rotate the brush, so I'll rotate the canvas. <laughs> color pencil we're, we're slowly running out of time so i'm going to use the color pencil here to add in a, a rim light it's a little harsh for a rim light but whatever i do like the color pencil for coming back in and like adding some tighter details it's an interesting way of doing things man that freaking watermark Otherwise, I would have a nice composition instead of having this jammy jam slammed up into the left. But that's okay. The more I go along, the fewer things I have to say. That's better. Uh, that's why I would be a terrible Twitch streamer. <laughs> but also my... Oh! Timer. Timer stopped. That's what we've got. All right, I'm going to save this out, I think. And then I will be back with some actual thoughts and reflections about this. Uh... Yeah, so be right back. I'm back. Turns out you can't actually export from the demo version. So I took a high res screen grab and that's what I'll use to create the thumbnail and all that kind of good stuff. The demo is disappointing in its functions because you have that big ass watermark on your canvas while you're working. I would have preferred if the canvas that you were painting on was clean. And then when you export something or save something, it, it splatters the, the watermark on it. That's fine, I don't give a shit about that. But when you're demoing a, a software, you kind of want the, the full experience before you jump in and buy it. Having said that, I loved the textures that you could get out of the program. I love that the, the paper texture bleeds through every time you add more paint to it. So it gives you that real painting experience. I didn't try any of the watercolor brushes because watercolor is not really my medium. I've tried it a couple of times and I just can't quite figure it out. I'm sure the digital version of watercolor is is easier to control, but it's just, it's not my thing. And I'm trying to get more painterly with some of my stuff. So I was really interested in what the oil brushes had to offer. I was very impressed with the, the glazing that you could do just Layering, layering thin coats of paint to build up forms. So that's really cool. One thing I'm a little disappointed with, and I think it's because I'm using a, a Huion tablet and not a Wacom, is the fact that I couldn't figure out the brush tilting on the initial go. I think if I spent more time with it, I could probably figure out how the brush tilt function works. One hour isn't really enough to kick the tires and see how the, the innards work and all that kind of stuff. But jumping right in without ever using the program before, 
I really enjoyed it. It's funny because I use another product by Escape Motion called Flame Painter when I'm doing the fire lizard stuff for School for Extraterrestrial Girls. So I should have seen Rebel. I probably looked at it and was like, I don't need another painting program. <laughs> In terms of value, uh, Rebel as of today is $89.99 for the base version and for Rebel Pro, it's $149.99. So it's 90 bucks or 150 bucks. And I think that's a little pricey, especially if you're a hobbyist. If you're a hobbyist trying to, trying to get your start with digital art and digital painting, Clip Studio offers a better value. You get much more stuff under the hood. I'm not a big fan of Clip Studio's interface. I use it all the time and I still think it's really ugly, but that's not why you use these programs. You use these programs to get a thing done. And I think Clip Studio can achieve similar looks to what you can do in Rebel with some tweaking, like maybe the, the paper texture wouldn't come through, so you'd have to do some funky overlay afterwards. If you want that traditional painting experience where you can see the glazes layering in, on top of each other, you can see the paint smear into it, into the other strokes and all that good stuff, Rebel is definitely the way to go. I just think it's a little pricey. Maybe wait for a sale or I don't know if they have education pricing. If you're coming from traditional medium, like if you're used to painting on canvas or paper and you're used to natural mediums, then maybe Rebel is the way to go because of all the programs that I've used so far. This one mimics those realistic conditions and how medium sits on a canvas and how it spreads on a canvas and how it deals with water or wetness and all that kind of stuff. Of the programs that are out there, I think Rebel is, is hard to beat. For me, I think I might wait until it goes on sale or if there is a discount or some kind of thing because I, I think it's fun to play with. And it had me thinking differently about the way I approached the work. Full price, I don't think so. I think it's a little a little too much, even for somebody who's locked into the Adobe subscription. That's a whole nother video, but I'll probably keep an eye out for a sale uh, right off the bat right now. I think it's just too rich for my blood. If you are a Rebel Stan, let me know in the comments. Tell me how horrible it is that I'm mispronouncing it because I actually have no idea how people pronounce this. This is like, the first time I've come across this. So I, I haven't watched any videos of anyone else using it or if they're calling it Rebel or Rebel, but I, I, I like I like Rebel. It kind of flows off the tongue and sounds fancy. And this program is nice and fancy. If you have other art programs that you use or that you're looking at that you want someone to kind of spend a short hour with and dig into, let me know what you're looking at and I'll give it a shot and go on out there and make some cool shit.